Welcome back to the Cugis Road to Nirvana. This is the fourth time I'm doing this intro because I always keep forgetting to switch off my intro screen. This is episode 10, Speed Map Creation, and I'm Tim Sutton. We're here to show you how to build a map from scratch in Cugis. Yesterday I was browsing around on uh, Flickr with CLBware, one of our team members, looking at some of the amazing maps um, to get some ideas for for giving her some tutorials. And um, so we, we ended up making something like this. And I thought I would do the same thing uh, on camera and show you the process I followed. I'm time capped, so I've got about only 25, 30 minutes. I'm going to just dive in. Uh, do like a stream of consciousness as I work. I'm sure Niall will afterwards come and tell me all the things that I could have uh, done better. Um, and um, just show you kind of the workflows. I'm starting in a fresh project, no data. And to get going, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, add OpenStreetMap as a background just to get uh, to find an island, basically. So I'm good, my map is going to be themed around an island. Um, I'll just take that and drop that in there. Um, and I'm going to find a nice little island somewhere. Maybe what's going on here. Let's, okay, that's Hawaii. Let's just find a small island. Maybe that's got, yeah, maybe just this one here. What is this? Kauai. Okay. Excuse my ignorance and the geography of <laughs> where we're going to be because I don't know this area very well. What I want to do is I just want to sort of zoom into here, grab the data for this bit and get going. So how do we get grab the data? You install the quick OSM plugin. It's like a must have plugin. Um, if you install QGIS, it's uh, probably one of the few that I would recommend everybody should install if you're at all interested in working with open data. It's made by our friend uh, Etienne Trimail, and um, it's easy to install. You just click install and off you go. And then there's a second plugin that I'm going to be use, using, which is the SRTM Downloader. Uh, this plugin is also a fantastic uh, tool, also from our friend Horst Duster from SourcePoll. Um, there's one catch with this plugin is that you need to have an account on the NASA. Um, website or whatever you well, I've already created that and set that up um, so I'm not going to be showing you how to do all that in the in the course of this video but you really should uh, just follow the instructions and it will tell you what to do okay so I've got those two plugins installed I'm going to go quickly here to this button here which will download the SRTM set it to the canvas extent I'm going to create a new project folder um, put it in my, in my next cloud drive I'm going to call this Maui. I don't even know how to pronounce it right or spell it correctly. Let's see if I spelled it correctly. Um, uh, it's, Ka <laughs> it's not even Maui, it's Kauai. Kauai. If anybody lives there and I pronounced it wrong, I apologize. Um, I'm going to leave out that apostrophe just to make my file name better. Kauai. Okay, and then inside of here, I'm going to make another folder called SRTM. I'm going to download all the SRT image, images into here. Uh, I'm going to hit the download button and let's go. Right, it wants to get 12 images here. It's asking for the credentials. You can see the link for where you can go and sign up if you don't have credentials already. I've already got my credentials in there. I'm just going to let that run in the background. It's going to go and grab... Um, whatever it needs. Okay, it's so quick because it's a small area. That's great. And then likewise, I'm going to go and use the quick OSM plugin. I'm only interested in places. So um, let's go to places, place, 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 place. Uh, here we go. Uh, that should give me like some place names and hopefully the, um, uh, the boundaries of the island as well, which I will use. So let's run that. Um, this will make temporary layers in QGIS, so we're going to go and make them permanent in a second. Um, I think it's all done. All right, so we've got some island boundaries there, and uh, hopefully there's some point data as well. They've got some point data for place names and so on. All right, and I'm going to save my project in a second. I'm actually going to go and make a geo package and drop all this data into the geo package. Um, so let me first make a new geo package here. Uh, I'm going to do it just using this nice tool in here. So we can say create database. I'm going to put the database inside of that same folder. C 
kawaii. All right, and then um, it wants a, a geometry type for a layer. I'm going to make already a layer, which I'm going to call the C. Um, and I'm going to be using, I want to use a coordinate reference system, which is sort of local to that area. So I'm going to go look at UGM, like, I don't know where, what uh, zone it would be in, but um, let's see if we can get like, um 14 maybe let's just see we want what wgs 84 utm zone 14 north so it's not far across enough um if i was smart i would go and find a um a utm zone map and just check it from there uh utm So let's just do, let's put it like this and just get the whole list. So what I'm doing is I'm just using this little browser at the bottom here to see which one um, matches. There's probably a better um, coordinate reference system to use, but since I don't know the area, I don't know what the local, locally used one is. Um, okay, that's to south. I want to get north. One north, let's see. Um, I have to remember where my island was. I think it was more. So maybe we have to go all the way um, in the other direction. Let's just take that one quickly and just see. I'm just going to zoom out a bit so I can see where I am on the world again. Oh, actually, that might not be too bad. So we want to be kind of be just in a line down under here. Um, I'm going to go set my map projection here to the same one. Uh, now it's a bit of a pain that it doesn't remember it, so I'm just going to look here to see. Um, so I think I've gone a bit too much across. I want to come maybe to be in zone 4 or something like that. So uh, I'm just going to go back to my map here and just find a zone that's more appropriate. This is probably the longest part of the whole thing is figuring out which um, UTM zone I'm in. Uh, let's, let's do it properly and go like this rather. UTM zone map. Okay, and then uh, find a nice looking one. Okay, so we were uh, more or less done. Yeah, so we should be in zone about four or zone five north. So um, four north. Let's just put like four north. Um, UTM zone four north. Yeah, that should be good. Okay. So I'm going to make a note of that number. It's three, two, four, five, four. Catchy number, and I'm just going to um, go to my geo package that I just created here, and just going to create another new layer, and I'm going to use that projection. So we're going to call this C, and it's going to be a polygon layer, and it was three, two. Oh, it's remembered it there. That's great. Okay. Um, and I'm going to add one field which is going to be just name a string. I'm going to write the name of the C um, in this uh, in this layer here. We'll just make it. Yeah, I think if we leave it naught, we can put as much text as we like in there. That's great. Um, that's it. Let's get rid of this other one. I didn't want this one. All right, and then we're going to do some quick reprojection of this one. So um, uh, we can just use the toolbox here, reproject, um, reproject layer. Uh, we're going to take that one there, the place, uh, we'll do the place polygon first. 
we're going to put it into that same four north zone and then uh, we're going to say run and then we're going to go back and we're going to get the point one reprojected to the same zone and run that okay and then we're going to take this one here and drop it into the kawaii folder here and I'm going to call this one rename it and just say uh, place area okay and then we'll do the other one here which is the points so drop it in here okay let's see up I dropped it in the wrong place <laughs> That's not going to be good. Let's just go clean that up here. Okay. Um, let's try again. So we're going to drop it on here. Okay. And I'm going to rename that one to place point. Place point. Okay, so we've got three layers now, all in that same coordinate reference system. Uh, I'm going to go and just get rid of all the temporary ones that we made now. Um, and then these um, rasters that we've got here, um, we want to put them into uh, uh, same coordinate system and I want to merge them all into one data set. So I'm going to go here to raster build a VRT. I'm going to choose all of the um, rasters except for the OpenStreetMap one. And then I'm going to go back to the options here. I'm going to make, make sure to untick this one so that, that they go in all into one single band. Um, and I'm just going to write it into a temporary file. Okay. And then I'm going to go and take this virtual layer and I'm going to reproject it um, and save it out to TIFF at the same time. So save as uh, and I'm going to put it in that folder where I was just working and I'm just going to call it your SRTM dot TIFF. All right and I'm going to go and uh, make sure to just set my um, set my coordinate reference system here to the one that I've been using for north. Uh, so at the same time as turning that virtual raster into a single data set, I'm also going to be uh, reprojecting it. Um, I'm not going to worry about any of these other options except for this one here. I'm going to just set zero for the um, uh, for the no data. And um, let's go, let's see what that does. Okay, you can see it busy converting the data set at the bottom here. And it's probably a good time to save my project as well when it's done. I'm not going to use this OpenStreetMap layer anymore, so I'm going to get rid of that. What I am going to use is a world data set. And the quick way to do that is just to type world in the bottom of the map here. I'm going to use this just uh, for the overview map that I created. All right, so we're just waiting for that to finish processing. Okay, so there's our new layer. We can get rid of these other ones. And I'm going to go to my file manager and just quickly clean up there as well. Um, I can basically get rid of this whole folder. Um, so I basically ended up with two files, a 312 megabyte SRT M TIFF image and Kawaii um, geopackage. Now I think I probably made a mistake when I was doing the SRTM export and I could have probably put it into an integer format. And I can also see there's some little holes in there and because there's probably some low-lying areas which are under zero I would guess or, or at zero um, meters um, above sea level. 
So let's add these layers back in here. Sorry, there's some construction noise outside. I hope it's not coming up on the mic. All right, so we've got some places and we've got some points and we've got the SRTM and um, we've got the C, which has got nothing in it. I'm going to save my project. I'm going to save it into the Geo package. So to save to Geo package, I'm going to pick up this one here, um, that one there. I'm going to call it Kawaii. Maybe it's Kawaii like that. That's how you pronounce it. I don't know. Okay, so now if I refresh here, um, you'll see the Kawaii is saved in my Geo package. Now there's these buffer areas outside of the, um, the island and then there's the interior um, area. So I want to just have a look at the data quickly. Okay, those are separate. That's separate. So I think we can get rid of these buffers. I don't think we need them. So I'm just going to edit that, delete those. And then I've got the island boundary. Uh, save my changes. Zoom to the layer. Um, okay, so there's actually a bunch of little ones like that um, spread all over the show. Um, I just go back to what I, what I did just now, I just select that. You can see it selects the inside of all of those triangles and then um, uh, let's just zoom in a bit here quickly. Oopsie. Um, did it select anything inside of these ones? What I'm going to do is just invert my selection. So just click on that button there and then just delete everything that's uh, been being picked up. Oopsie, I must go to edit. Yeah. Okay. Um, save. All right. So we landed up with just a few islands. That should be great scene for my map. Now, um, I think I want to just clip out every point that's outside of the scene as well. So I'm just going to go here, select all these points like this, invert the selection, edit, delete, save, and then go save again there. All right, so if I zoom out now, I've got much less data to deal with. Um, don't worry about all those lines. We might have some issues with, with those because uh, we're right on the date line, I think, or right near the date line, but let's see how we go. This SRTM is bigger than the, this area. That's why it was um, downloading. Let's see what it got for there. Um, I think I want to just clip it to the extent of the map and shrink it down a bit. So, um, And I also want to just check that we don't seem to have any data for here on the SRTM. So I think it actually pulled in more than um, more than I needed and I think I should just make my map on this three. Obviously if you're doing this um, in a for a real world thing you're gonna not just be grabbing random data like I am but because I've got the luxury of just making a speed map I'm just gonna get rid of everything I don't care about here so I'll get rid of that Sorry for all the people that live on those other islands. Uh, let's get rid of those. All right. Oh, wait, I still want to get rid of these ones here. Now, why is nothing actually... Oh, that's from the country layer in the background. Sorry. Okay. Uh, good. Okay. So that was confusing me because of that, yeah. I want to just clip this um, raster out a bit as well. So I'm going to just zoom into the um, these three islands, basically. That's going to be my subject for my map. And then I'm going to just say clip this SRTM by the extents of the of the view. So um, just do here, clip, clip raster by extent. The clipping extent, we can just use the map canvas. Um, and we're going to put the result out to um, save to file here. I'm going to put it in that same folder. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got a new copy of the SRTM. I'll get rid of the old one. And again, I'm just going to go and tidy up on my file system here because I've got... Uh, oh, it actually made a, uh, made a VRT. I'm just going to save that to um, a file again. So SRTM, I have to call it... Um, I'll put Kawaii SRTM. All right, and let's make sure the no data gets carried over as well. Probably does automatically, but just to be sure. Okay. It's busy clipping it. Okay, and we can get rid of this. And we can get rid of this and this. Um, sorry, <laughs> press the wrong button on the keyboard there. Okay, so now we've got a nice clean project set up. Let's go and get some styles going. I'm going to just save my work. So I'm going to duplicate this um, layer once for a um, terrain model in the background and once or a hillshade model and once for to give it some texture so for, first of all let's go here set the symbology to hillshade um, just apply it to see how it looks um, I can't see because that one's covering it just go back to here uh, I'm just going to switch over to using the uh, what's it is it crashing We might have crashed QGIS. Okay, it's good. Um, so I'm just going to go here. Oh, no, it did crash. Okay, no worries. We'll just start again. Save your project every few minutes. That's the trick. So I've got about uh, 10 minutes left to actually make some styles. So let's go in here. And then uh, I'm just going to re re-add that because that got lost when it crashed. So this one I'm going to call it. Um, I'm going to call it uh, hillshade. This one I'm going to call it relief. This one I'm going to call it land or islands. This one I'll call places. And I'll just rename this with a capital letter to make it consistent. Okay, and then the hill shade. Um, I'm actually just realizing that I might have deleted the whole island um, boundary because uh, there's nothing there. So I might have to go grab that again. I, I think I was working too quickly and I made a, a mess up somewhere along the line. So anyway, let's go for this part here. Um, we're going to go and set this to um, your shade here. You can see it's already done a nice job of that. Uh, maybe we could exaggerate it a bit. All right, and then uh, for this one here, we're going to create a relief um, theme for it. So I'm going to use this color ramp that I had already sitting here. Um, I'm going to give it like 10 classes. Um, it's always a bit of a fiddle to get it. Uh, sorry, it's over here. I want to it to 10 classes and I want to set some uh, rendering effects here to uh, the blending mode I'm going to use multiply um, the one behind it is too dark looking so I just want to go and tweak that a bit maybe I want to take off this ah, that why well, it looks so weird okay let's zoom in there that's looking quite nice. Um, 
All right, okay. Let's save the project. Next, we're going to try to re fix up this uh, issue with uh, missing things. I'm actually going to just delete this one. Sorry, I have to repeat the work. Um, I'm going to go use Quick OSM, get the places again. In Canvas Extent. Uh, let's place with a small p. Okay, and then we're just gonna um, select just the inside bits here, that one and that one, invert the selection, delete the other bits, save that. I'm gonna go back to my geo package and just delete that place layer that I created. Um, place area. And we're going to run reproject again. Um, run that. I just wanted to just check because I didn't save my work first. Um, uh, so it did something strange. Uh, let me go back. We can do it again. Go to here, quick OSM, place, okay, we can get delete those two. Select that, invert, edit, delete, save. All right, and then reproject. So I think because uh, when I did it before, I was in edit mode, so I wanted to do an in-place um, editing of the current layer, which um, I don't think that's what I want to do. So I'm going to just run that now. Let's see. Yeah, so we've got a new layer here. And then we're going to just drag and drop this back into the package here. Okay, and rename it. Um, delete those two. Uh, and then add that one back into the map. Okay, save the project. Now what I want to do is I want to create um, kind of like a sea mask. Um, just go back out again, but Oh, we're back with all the islands, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to focus on this area. So I'm just going to create on this sea layer here. I'm just going to create a big, big old rectangle. Um, so I'm going to just edit the layer, create a new polygon, create a rectangle. Um, just go like this. And I'm going to call this the Pacific. Ocean. Okay, and then what I want to do is I want to get rid of all the islands out from inside of there so that I can make a kind of a glowing border around the islands. So I'm going to just save that change there. And I'm going to do a union between the sea and the um, So the input layer is the C, the overlay layer is place. Let's just run that. 
Okay, and we get a new layout which has got um, if we select here, it's just got the it should be the outside. I'm just gonna turn off all the other layers. Um, okay, so if I invert that selection and then delete those. Um, and then just copy this feature to my clipboard. I go to the C, edit that. Um, I'm going to delete this one here and paste in my clipped feature, my clipboard feature, and then save my changes. So now I've got the C, which has got uh, no land on it. I can get rid of this union layer and save my project. Okay, now I'm going to um, create a fill for the C, which is going to be like a um, uh, shape burst fill. Let's see how we go here. So, shape burst, um, single symbol, oopsie, go here, shape burst, shape burst, shape burst here. And I wanted to go from the inside out. Um, so let's see, I want to go from like a nice blue here, something like that, uh, to be then go to transparent. So I'll just put that to like that. And I'm going to do it to a set distance of maybe five. Five is maybe good to start. And then I'm going to add another symbol there here, which is going to go below that. Just going to be a solid fill for the for the rest of the sea. Um, I just choose a nice blue color like this. All right. Okay. I remember, our area of interest is just over here, so I'm going to just go back into here. All right. So you can see we've got kind of like a glowing edge around the sea. Could probably try to make that gradient a bit smoother uh, a bit later, but. For now, I think that's good. Right, let's put the, the relief data back on there. And we're starting to see how it's looking. This thing's still a bit strong maybe, but okay, let's see. Um, right, and then the other places I'm not that interested in the moment. What I want to do next is I want to have a label here which says the Pacific Ocean. Maybe I would like it to go over here. So I'm going to add to this um, see a label um, now if you remember when I was doing the setting up the layer I gave it a a name field there and you can see it puts it there but it looks kind of horrible so what we're going to use is a geometry generator to place the label in a specific place to do that I'm going to make a scratch layer and I'm going to make an arch that goes across here so I'm going to say create a new scratch layer um, it doesn't matter the name, doesn't matter anything there. All I care about is the geometry type. Um, so I'll make it a curve. We're going to make it in the same coordinate reference system. Um, okay, I'm going to digitize a new feature there. I'm going to say create a circular uh, string like this. And I'm going to go here like that. Um, and make a nice arched shape like that. Let's go like that. Right, and then uh, I want to copy this feature to my clipboard and then go back to my C layer here for the geometry generator. And I'm going to say, I'm going to use a WKT. I'm going to create a geometry from a well known text. Paste my clipboard into there, delete that extra bit there, and close off the bracket at the end there. Uh, let's see what I've done is uh, I have to put that into a string as well. Um, single quote, single quote, like that. Okay, and then you can see at the bottom it's a valid geometry. All right, and then. Um, we're going to tell it to place it along the curve. So, um, geometry generator. I have to tell it the type here is a line string, and then we're going to tell it 
below the line and we're going to tell it to make it curved like this and we're just going to go to the font here choose something a bit more snappy looking um, maybe something like that and just bump up the size a bunch and I'll choose a white font I think it would be nice all right and then we can get rid of the scratch layer just got save the project and I'm going to stop there because I've got to go to a meeting but um, you can see we're already one big step closer towards having a nice looking map uh, I'll join in a second session to follow up on this one and we'll actually um, create a, a, a map layout and put a put that globe in and everything that I showed you in the start of the of the session. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.